Mind the shot? Sure are. Am I bright? Uh. So autumn is here. And is it not just the best time of the year to it might go be. It might be photos. the best for photos. All the colours, all the nice like sunrises, sunsets. It is Always looks good. favourite season. I love the changing colours of autumn and it's the best time to get some really, really cool photos. So what we did was we woke up really early one morning. Really early. For us, really early. Yes, before sunrise. And we wanted to go out and capture some autumn themed photos. And we did. We sure did. So the plan for the morning was to create a cool autumn photo set. Obviously with all the colours in, we didn't really have any specific shots, we just knew we wanted to get quite a few shots that kind of covered the whole autumn scenery. Yes, it was important to get those autumn colours in there, so like the True. oranges, the reds, um, we had to try and find some trees that were orange. Probably add some moodiness into the edits too. So when we're out doing little photo walks like this, what we're kind of looking for is like stuff that stands out. Like obviously the colors and the first thing we actually noticed was the red berries on the holly trees. It's not really particularly like autumnish, but it just looked cool. Yeah. The reds and the green mix was kind of nice. So snapped a few little photos of that and just looked pretty cool, I thought. Not the greatest shots ever, but we were just getting warmed up a little bit and... <laughs> it was still yeah. early. Yeah. So obviously, when you think autumn, you think leaves, you think orange leaves. You sure do. <laughs> but we were lucky enough to actually find leaves that were mid-changing. So they were like half green, half orange. Like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, it's still quite early, like autumn here or at least when it was when we were out so we were kind of right in the middle of it changing yeah and we kind of thought it'd be cool to kind of tell the story of the like change exactly. over between green and orange so we snapped this picture of these leaves that were changing between the green and the orange color and it, it just turned out so cool kind of a cool gradient just fades into orange The next shot that we got is, I think, a perfect example of that colour yes. transition that you get between summer and autumn. So many colours in one photo. We snapped a picture of these ferns, which are, of course, usually green, um, but we got all the colour tones between yellow, orange, brown. Like, they're in, they're so all in many. there. They're all in there. Yeah. It, it they so were just good. kind of sitting, like, on the... I don't know, they were almost dead. Some of them were almost dead, but yeah. they were just kind of in a little pile, and mm -hmm. all the colours were there. It was a good spot, and just went for a pretty simple straight down kind of like a flat lay type shot yeah don't really know how you describe those straight down just kind of a textury sort of shot and i like it. might be it might be one of my favorites if not my favorite <laughs> from the day also spotted this massive cow i just think field. it was a bull yeah right right beside where we were Snapped a quick little shot of it. I mean, it's nothing special. It's it's nice framing. I don't really particularly, particularly like the, the lighting and the sky is a little bit plain, but snapped it anyway. <laughs> and then as we were walking, we saw the reddest leaf just <laughs> sitting on the ground. I have no idea where it came from. There were no trees around that have had leaves of that color. Maybe it came all the way from Canada because it looked it, like a Canadian it's leaf. It's the perfect Canadian leaf. If you put that in the middle of the Canadian flag, it would just, well, it's actually white on the flag, isn't it? <laughs> but it was the perfect no, Canadian leaf. No, it's red. Leaf. Is it? 
Red. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we got a few shots of that. And then we actually sat the leaf down on the ground and there was like kind of like shells of like nuts that had fell off the tree mm -hmm. and they were just like all over the ground and it makes a really cool like textury shot. It kind of yeah. looks like something you would have set up for like a product shot or something. It does. Um, set the leaf straight down. Again, shot straight down. It was just kind of feeling that vibe, especially from the previous shot. Looked cool, went for a really moody edit with this one. Oh my and god, like first it. of all, yes, let's talk about that edit. It is quite, so moody. It's quite drastic, but I feel like that's what it kind of needed um, to draw attention because the leaf's so red and with the background kind of like with a good vignette on it and it kind of being dark. Yeah. Um, but like all those shells and stuff, little bits of twigs in the ground just worked pretty but well. The shot that we got with the top down, that's actually how we find that leaf. So yeah. like, it's like it represented that too. It's kind of cool. So as we were continuing just to walk around and still taking some pictures, we spied this little house just like sitting on its own in the distance with the trees, like the forest in the background and the mountains in the background. And it just looked really, really cute and cool. It was just kind of cool, the, the framing and stuff and where it was. Yeah, it just stood out so much in between all yeah. those trees and there was like different colored trees around it. And so we tried our best to get the shot that we wanted i'm not sure it's, it's decent it's decent it's decent i would probably like to go back and try mm. and like maybe if the lighting was a bit different or try and angle it a bit different and yeah. change things but it's, it's it's decent by the way just in case you're wondering if you're new to photography or maybe you don't do photography at all you're wondering why the hell we get up so early to do this well it's because the lighting is nice and soft at like sunrise it's quite low and it's kind of more of a glow it's almost like the equivalent of like using a soft box that we are now it's it's not harsh and especially when you're taking photos of like trees or leaves or stuff and you want to get the colors you don't want harsh light kind of beaten down on it and yeah. kind of makes you don't everything want those harsh shadows yeah and it makes everything look a little, bit, a little bit washed out too so early in the morning or later in the evening gives you that like soft kind of glow which will look better for these type of photos especially just thought i'd let you know i'm a wanderer it is worth getting up early yeah i'm a wanderer good song anybody know it? So when you're doing little photo collections like this, one very important thing to think about is the type of shots that you get. So True. we wanted to mix it up between like landscapey, far away type shots and then really up close. Landscapey, far away. Landscapey, far Wide away. Shots. <laughs> Wide shots. Wide shots. Landscapey, far away. Same thing. Wide shots. And then, of course, contrast that with some up-close shots. <laughs> yeah, like, it, just a variation of... It's kind of the same with the B-roll, too. You want to kind yeah. of show the area, then show some close-ups, then some, like, real textury shots. And it's kind of the same with, with, with photography. When you make a little photo set, you want to kind of let people know, like, the area and then the real details. Yeah, the details. Like yeah. the fern shot, that's real close up. Exactly, so that's and what I had in mind. When I captured this shot of the ferns, um, I got right up in there. You did. And I mean right up in there to capture the real detail of those ferns and it turned out really cool. It did. And because Christina shot this one in landscape, we uploaded it on Instagram as a, like a split pic so you can scroll across and see all the detail. Um, cool. 
we have done a video on this before, but if you'd like to see us maybe explain it a little bit quicker probably, then drop a comment below and we'll do another video on it. And keeping with those texture shots, because it was so early in the morning, there was still like water droplets on the grass and stuff, and mm -hmm. Christina got right in there with this shot. Really close up, really zoomed in um, on this, like few little water droplets on the grass, and we did a really moody edit on it, and I really liked how this one turned out. Yeah, it looks so cool. Look how crystal that water droplet looks. It's so good. So it's really important to capture those textures, get those close-up shots when you're doing photo collections like this, because you want a contrast between close-up and wide. And when we're out doing these little photo shoots, it doesn't always really go to plan. The next no. shot that I was trying was of like a massive pile of ferns. They were all orange, looked kind of cool. And when Christina was getting the shot of the grass, I was kind of standing there like thinking how I could kind of take a photo of this and putting it kind of all in focus. Just, I couldn't see how that was gonna really look great just with the angle I was getting on it. So I thought um, maybe I could like get the, the nearest one in focus and then it kind of fades off till just a lot of ferns kind of in the background with a bit of the uh, glow from the sky coming in through mm -hmm. the trees. And it just didn't turn out like I wanted. There just isn't enough separation from the close fern that's in focus to the rest. There's just yeah. too much texture and I don't know. It was hard to kind of make it look how I wanted it to look when I was out. How I would have liked it to look. I couldn't really do it in editing. It just wouldn't come together. Yeah, like to me it kind of looks a little messy. Yeah, exactly. Like there's just, you can't see the depth enough and it's just kind of like, oh. Yeah, the furnace and focus kind of blends in a little bit to the background. And um, besides maybe shooting in like a lower aperture, maybe 1.8 might have made enough difference to make it stand out more. Or if the sun hadn't been shining on the background of the ferns as much. Yeah. But what can you do? They don't always go to plan. Exactly. And when people are out doing videos like this and showing you their photos, there's a lot more photos that didn't go to plan as well. You just don't see them. Yes, there's a lot of photos that don't make the cut. You just have to remember that. You're not always going to get the bangers, as they call them. And this one we did include because I still kind of like it. It just it could have been better. So we wanted a photo, of course, that captured more of the area that we were in. So something that kind of told the story of where we are. And we wanted one of like the forest. Uh, the color of the trees in this one is probably one of my favorites. We did also capture this shot with Chris in it as well, um, kind of walking in yeah. the distance. Um, Sorry, but it looked better without you. <laughs> it did look a little better. I think it's, it just looks, I don't know, it looks like a path kind of in the middle of nowhere. Just yeah, it's like leading to through nowhere. Through a forest, there's the roads like directly in the middle, just leading through, it kind of gets a little bit darker. And then you have like the mountain kind of peeking out in the background. So it's kind of got everything. We probably should have shot this in landscape too, but yeah. I don't think we did. Um, Work. And then after we had snapped that shot, um, literally there was like a huge mountain right to the left of us. And I think it was you that spotted that the clouds were just kind of flowing over the mountain. And it looks really moody. It wasn't really that particularly cloudy of a day. No. But the shot I had in mind was quite a zoomed in, quite like a tight shot of the mountain. And it kind of makes it look like a really moody day. Past the tree with some like other trees and autumn -y vibes um, in the shot. Just leads up to the mountain, which had like a load of clouds over it. And it, it's probably one of the best kind of shots of like, of that style of shot I've got. Yeah, agree. Since we started taking these kind of photos. Quite like it, turned out pretty well. Um, yeah, another little tip uh, for taking photos, especially if you don't have a really wide lens and you struggle with like getting your exposure good, you have to zoom in a lot and you drop your shutter too low maybe to be handheld or like to the to the point where you're zoomed in that much that it's quite shaky. Um, James Pops, is, who's a photographer we've mentioned before on the channel, <laughs> I actually brought a little tip up and it just makes a lot of sense and I never yeah, done it. Our camera has quite a grip on it, so you can hold it with one hand and the hand that you're actually pressing the shutter with. But when you're taking photos like this and you're zoomed in and your shutter might be a little bit lower, um, literally just let the camera sit on 
this hand and then just use this one to kind of stabilize it and press the button yeah. and you get way less shake. Yeah, so instead of actually holding it with this hand, you're resting it on one hand and then just using yeah. this hand. Very simple button. tip. For some reason, I just didn't do that before. before. And now I do it all the time. It really does make a difference, especially when you zoom in a lot. And you, you zoom in when you're editing, you can see like a little bit of motion blur. Um, it, it takes a lot of that out. Yeah, so that's a great little tip for you if you're wanting nice steady handheld shots. Sometimes it's not possible though, and sometimes you have to whip out the tripod. So thanks James Pops <laughs> for that tip. We're just relaying it. So I think because we have such a zoom lens on our camera, we actually use the RX10 Mark III. As we always say, an interesting choice. An interesting of choice, Catherine. nonetheless. But it's one we've had for ages and yeah, it's got a crazy 24 to 600 on a small sensor though. So see if it cropped even more. Yes, but I think we always, or at least we have for a long time because we've had this camera for so long, we always kind of zone like zoom in or like zone in on certain areas yeah. because we know we can zoom so far to get shots so we're not really used to taking wide shots or landscape shots it's something we're kind of learning to yeah. see like the wide shots because we're never really used to them with this lens they're not exactly. really possible we know we can't get them so we're like yeah. let's zoom in on something especially because we've done a lot of street photography and stuff and you yeah. tend to be like tight shots or more what you would do with street photography so i feel like this shot is kind of like that we also split this one into a split is it a split screen a split uh split yeah split screen photo split on instagram screen. <laughs> but it was originally Scrollable. a landscape um and it was well just we took we took both we took oh we did yeah we took, we took both a lot of shots of this particular shot of the trees yeah mainly because when we were standing there it just there was just so many layers it was like kind of the foreground like shrubbery type stuff and then there was like the layers of trees where it was like green orange green then a little bit of the mountain and then the clouds in the sky so that is the perfect word for this shot layers and that's what we seen we're like that just looks too cool it was kind of more the trees that drew my attention to it the way it was and yeah. layers just always kind of make a good shot another little thing that we did have a little bit of a problem with with this shot was we took a lot of variations of it and because the sky was pretty damn bright it was getting a little bit brighter at that stage the sun was a lot higher yeah um the clouds helped a little bit but the sun was like the brightness of the sun was kind of coming through them and when i was editing i realized that we had underexposed a lot of them because we kind of were exposing for the sky but because we have quite a small sensor in our camera when i was trying to bring the shadows up in lightroom it was just kind of killing the quality of like the and the colors the lower area yeah the colors of the trees in the lower area just it was killing the quality a little bit i was like i thought i exposed that quite well but unless you have quite a big sensor in your camera it's going to be harder to bring the shadows back when you underexpose especially when it's that almost like a silhouette vibe with it with the brightness part in the in the background if this makes sense so <laughs> What I'm saying is if you have the ability to photo stack in your camera, choose that and then it'll do three pictures, one the middle exposure, one like a step above, one step below, then you can combine them. I kind of did this myself and I was taking it. I think I used the photo where I photo stacked or maybe the one where I actually overexposed because I was able to bring the sky back. And what you mean by that is exposing for different parts of the yeah, so photo. Yeah, so I just done just quite a few variations and I think I might have actually used the one that was actually like in camera overexposed, but because they're shot and raw, I was able to bring the sky back and all the detail was still kept in the, in the foreground and the trees. That's quite a lot, but hopefully it makes lot. sense. Yeah. Take multiple exposures if you're not sure, yeah. so you can either combine them or use the one that works best. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Some sort of sense. But that's what I learned during this. <laughs> So I think that's mainly all the photos that we got that day. I think we got some really, really good ones. I'm really happy I'm with the happy collection with it, yeah. that we put together. Before we finish, let's decide what was your favorite photo. What's my favorite? <sighs> I think I'm kind of torn between the texture shot of the ferns, the straight down shot, just because I really like those shots. And I think they would also look cool as like a print or something too. Yeah. And then the shot of the mountain with the clouds above it, the kind of tight shot past the tree. I think those two, they're completely different, so it's hard to choose they one are. of those. My favourite of the day was the red leaf on the ground, I think. Oh yeah, I it, think it's, the edit of I it is like it. so good. It just stands out so much. Um, yeah, it was, it was probably my favourite. Yeah, there's different, there's 
some people go out and take photos and like it it's kind of the photo they take is kind of the end result i don't know if it's just because we've made editing such a big part of our photo yeah. process but especially when we're taking photos we kind of think more about how we're going to edit them a lot some people do some don't depends on the type of photography you are but we do and with that leaf the end product was kind of what i was seeing at the time even though it didn't look like that I don't yeah know. No, i know what you i don't mean. really know what type what you call that but that's kind of the way we are with with a lot of photos like that kind of have in, in mind how you want it to look even though the photo's not particularly like that and then edit is <laughs> a big part of it let us know which one is your favorite out of that collection and again if you want to check it out head over to our instagram at mag and teens drop it a little like and let us know which one's your favorite yeah anyway if you enjoyed this one guys make sure to give it a big thumbs up and is that it that's it yeah we had fun going out taking we some did. autumn photos next up is we, halloween yeah we've got a cool photo idea for halloween and also we did forget to use our uh, action cam on top of our camera in this one apologies for that we'll do it in the next one you'll get a bit more pov stuff in there but yeah as we always say take it easy don't be a stranger